Nice to clone productions. <laughs> this is a video scripted and produced by Six Master and his editors. Plug of the day. Go check out my Patreon. It will really help the channel grow and sustain itself. Also, Patreon members do get shoutouts at the end of every video, so if you are a Patreon member, make sure to stay to the end to see yourself shouted out. Also, join my Discord, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Also, thanks to the Dragon Lord, we can roll that intro. So, last part, oh my god, a uh, really cool fucking power with his black whip. He learned how to make clothes with it, but he has to concentrate and keep it up. Um, but, I'm gonna say it's sports festival. And because All Might's up and ready, he's gonna be there. Um, he no longer has the wound, so he's gonna finally make a big public appearance again. Like, and... I'm gonna say he gonna do a conference like in between like rounds and shit with like reporters so um yeah let's get into the sports festival everyone's there like I think it was the day before the sports festival actually where like class 1b general studies and all of, the, of them groups like gather outside 1a's room oh and in this time, Shinto or Shinso or whatever his name was, the guy with the mind control ability, was trained by Aizawa so that um, he could use the scarf. And he actually did fill in the form to let him use it in the sports festival, so yeah. Um, but fucking. Uh, how do you say this? So basically. All of them are outside, but no shin. So this time it's, I think his name was Monoma, the guy with the copy quirk. He's like freaking out on 1A. And Raven and Deku are just like walking and ignoring him. And he's like, why do you think you're better than me? And fucking, they just like take out earphones. Even though it wasn't on, they pretend it was on. And they're like, you say something. He's like, you think you're better than me, aren't you? And they're like, we really don't care. Like, we don't think we're better than anyone, but... If you think you're under us, so that's your own opinion. And this is pissing me off because he is the one saying that they think he's better, they're better than him. Which means he's like psychologically putting himself down. They're like, well, bro, you should probably stop putting yourself down. I bet your quirk's amazing. I bet you genius. So, yeah, they just put the earphones back in and they walk. They put the earphones in to like make people not talk with them because they got like a mental link. Uh, they use like... Um, is it telekinesis or telepathy? I'm not sure, but they talk to each other within their minds. And yeah, now sports festival. Um, first thing, the race. When Todoroki like fucking freezes everyone, he knows that um, Deku and Raven would probably be the only ones he has to worry about. Um, and like this is where Deku and Raven is actually gonna hold competition. They said no portals. They're just gonna fucking bolt it. So, as they say go and Todoroki tries and pulls the fucking ice thing, they just start to float and both of them fucking bolt like aura around them, boosting themselves, not each other, and themselves, just themselves. And they're like fucking bolting. And they're already like fucking over the trip wires, or like the fucking balancing wires. They're already like at the minefield, and Deku's like, I got a dirty chick, and he scoops up a landmine and he smacks it right in front of Raven. And he just just wins because she's pissed now. Fucking four eyes or six eyes or whatever fucking chasing his ass down. And he just just wins. And she's like that was a fucking dirty chicken. She just punches him. He's like I know I know. And Midnight's like first place Izuku Midoriya. Second place. Did I just say place? I'm in place. Second place is Maho Akuma. Um, and... Then when everyone's done, she explains everything in canon. Um, and in this one, it's um, Raven, Deku, Ochaka, Ida, 
and Tokoyami. Um, yeah, fuck it. Um, so, I'm gonna say that fucking boot girl is with like Kirishima and them because she not really fucking. What was her name? The pink haired fucking support core girl. Deku and Raven don't need support core, uh, support shit, so. I don't really see any use for her in this what if. But yeah, like. I'm gonna say. They're just fucking smart. And Deku uses his aura to cover it, so it's technically a part of his quirk, even though it's not a quirk. Um, so. He's like fully within the rules, like no one getting his, like he gets first place, him and his group, so everyone there goes through. I'ma say most shit goes to canon, but because Bakugo wasn't uh, in this, I'ma just say Raven takes his place, like in everything. So I'ma just get to the important fights, like Deku vs Shinso, Deku's like, bruh, step out of the ring, you ain't winning, and then Shinso starts talking like asking questions like indirectly so he's actually smart he doesn't ask the question directly he's like speaking and just puts a question in and if Deku says something he technically answers it but Deku doesn't he just shuts the fuck up and he just goes as Zintos as Prison Mike said begin and fucking like the entire arena started like fucking reality bending like fucking warping in his mind he just like cast an illusion spell but this is like fucking with um, Shinto's mind. Like he's like oh shit. Oh shit. Like he's fucking wobbling. And people are like confused. And then Deku just like shoots a fucking thing at him. He sees it coming. But to him it's like going from side to side. So he like. And then he sees it's gonna hit him from the left side with this. And he puts up his bandages to his left. And then it just hits him straight in the stomach. Sending him flying back out of the ring. So Deku on that. Um, and. Uh, Raven wins against Uchaka because that not really a fight so <laughs> and I think it was Todoroki against Ida I'm not sure but that still goes to canon but um Raven was like she didn't explode shit so Uraka never got to like float shit up all Raven did is she fucking like made a wall of fucking with her basically her thing what's it called her magic but quirk um and she just like continually pushes it forward pushing Uraka out of the ring she could Uraka couldn't really do shit so yeah and now one of the interesting fights um Deku versus Todoroki Todoroki's still only using his ice and he still thinks he's like if he goes all out he can beat Deku and Raven even though he can't so and he's like, and Deku's like, bro, you ain't winning unless you use both your fire and your ice. And he's like, I don't need it. That's his quirk. And Deku just like fucking pushing him around like a little bitch. Um, like he was a little bitch. And he's like, okay, okay, I get it. And he starts using his fire. And Deku's like, there you go. Just remember, that's your quirk. That isn't his. So use it to protect people. And shit like that. And Deku knows about Todoroki's mom because... He did research on Todoroki because his quirk was interesting. And he find that out and he's like... First of all... I should tell you, get him arrested, like, bruh. And he's like, and Todoroki's like, what do you mean? He's like, first, abuse. Illegal. Abused you, abused your mom. He physically, um... Like, made your mom seem insane so she would be put in a mental asylum, dude. Like, fucking get him arrested. She could come out. And... Endeavor's like listening, he's like, um, and now Endeavor's character arc is gonna come early, so because I like doing that, and he's just like fucking thinking about it, and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a fucking dick of a father. Um, because All Might's back, I'm gonna say he knows that he's got no chance of becoming number one. Um, so, and he still wants the best for fucking Todoroki, and Todoroki's like, you're right, it's not his quirk, it's mine. And I'm gonna use it to show him that I'm better than him. And he is like, but now you've just sealed your own fate. You he doesn't even say lose, and Deku's already used like boosting magic to get fucking in front of him and kick the shit out of him. And Todoroki's like, <clears throat> he just fucking coughs up a, a lot of saliva and just gets sent flying. 
And his feet aren't on the floor anymore, so he can't use like ice to fucking block him. Or he can't even think because he was hit so hard that he's fucking confused. And he just lands outside and everyone's cheering like, whoa! Because Deku did show off some flashy shit. And now it's Raven versus Deku. Um, Raven vs. Jackalup. So they both power up their aura and they're like, mm. they just start like fucking. Raven would like fucking send some feathers. Deku would like send a slash to cut them up. Like fucking. Um, and they would just like swap hands for a little bit. And they're like, and people are like cheering and they're like, want to give them a real show? Deku says, and Raven's like, yeah. Oh no, Raven's like, want to give them a real show? And Deku's like, why not? And they both go fucking sin trigger mode. Sin devil trigger mode is what I called it. Them basically turning into like fucking Dante and Virgil with De Deku being ye um, yellow in dominant color and white as the background color. And Raven with red as dominant and white as background color. So like with Dante and Virgil, I think it's red and black for Dante and blue and black for Virgil. But blue and red being their dominant colors, so yeah, it's basically like that, just re replacing some colors, um, and they look a little different, so yeah, um, and now they fucking swap in hand, like they fucking bigger because of their devil form, they look like fucking cool, everyone's like, whoa, that's so awesome, they like fucking swapping hands, um, fucking Kirishima and what was his name? The other guy with that quirk. Tetsu Tetsu. Tetsu Tetsu. Yeah, that's his name. Like, um, Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu. Tetsu Tetsu is like, bro, that's almost like our fight. Like, do you think we can do that? And he's like, maybe, but we have to make our own original forms. We want, uh, don't want people copying. And they're like, fist bone. They're like, yeah. And they're like bros now because Bakugo isn't there to be like Kirishima's bro. So, Tetsu Tetsu. Tetsu Tetsu. And Kirishima are gonna be that type of bros, like they're gonna train together, all that shit. So, um, and I'm gonna say the same thing that happened with them happens with like Deku and Raven are like fucking flying around, beating the shit out of each other, casting spells, but they basically both have the same spells. But Deku has secretly been working on a on a spell he calls Cage, where he would just like say as Mirak Metri on Zinthos, and like it seems like a straight up fire spell. And he knows that Raven would counter with her own fire spell, like that laser thing. And his would like split off just as hers is about to collide and it would like come around her. But, and then like crush her until she passes out. But secretly she's been doing it too. Like they didn't even realize the other head. Like it just looks like a little different and it works a little different. Raven's goes like, it basically is hollow in the inside. So when Deku's would go towards it, it would just like, Consume, it looked like he consumed his and just like fucking surround him in a circle and just like suck all the oxygen out so he would pass out and they fucking like throw this they're like I see my opportunity and both of them do it and they both fucking pass out because they were opposite sides of the ring and their spells because it was cast at the exact same time both of them fell on the ground at the same time like they weren't unconscious at the same time but they're spells wore off at the same time and everyone's like what another another tie and um prison mike's like it's a tie this is a first two ties in one tournament wow and it's like first izuku midoriya and maho akuma second todoroki Shoto Todoroki. Third. Okay, so I'm gonna say first. First. Tied. Maho Akuma and Izuku Midoriya. Second. Shoto Todoroki. Tied. Uraka. Uh, Uchaka Uraka. Third. Tied. Ida. Tokoyami. Kirishima. And Tetu 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 Tetu. Everyone's like doing, whoa, yeah. And it's like, fuck yeah, bro. Um, so, uh, <laughs> like fucking Raven and Deku got all the fucking shit. Like all the like work study requests and shit. 
So I'm gonna say a while goes past and I'm gonna just do the on my conference and people's like oh my you haven't been available for conferences or reporting or whatever you know quite a while quite um care to explain why and he's like well i had a very bad injury and it was affecting my hero work i could only do use my powers for a certain amount of time a day but young midoriya and akumo found out a way to fix it fix my problem and they're like how and he's like they used their quirks to do something to me i don't want to explain how what they did and it helped and now I can be the hero I once was everyone's like so will you finally reveal what your quirk is and he's like no they're like what's your relationship with these kids and he's like yeah they helped me and I helped them and I think they will be the next number ones I see them as my successors my disciples my pupils everyone's like they're gonna be amazing if all might sees them as the next number ones so Everyone's like hyped because of them. And this makes fucking hero agencies want them even more. So, basically. And then they're like, oh my, will you finally reveal what your quirk is? And he just like, well, I want to explain. But my quirk is kind of difficult to explain. And they're like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, if you were to take an x-ray, you would see that I'm quirkless. And they're like, what? And he's like, but I'm not. I have version of the first generation quirk virus so yeah the quirks uh, they're caused by a virus and the first generation was a little bit different than the current generation and he explains his entire family like his mom dad his grandparents on both sides had quirks from the first generation and they're like so what does that have to do with your quirk and he's like my quirk is like a combination of all of their quirks and they're like what and he's like yeah first generation quirks are rather interesting well my quirk itself is a stockpiling quirk like and they're like what do you mean and he's like well the more experience and power i get the stronger though some of my quirks get and they're like quirks and he's like it's the same quirk it just branches off into different directions using the power to, uh, the power attribute i inherited from my father i can basically fly and they're like wow how do you do that and he's like wind pressure but I learned how to channel the energy through my body at such a speed that it creates wind pressure that can make me float. And they're like, explain. And he just starts floating with like wind cycling around him. They're like, interesting, interesting. And he's like, also from my father, I inherited Black Whip. And they're like, what? And he just like shows Black. He doesn't say Black Whip, but he explains what it basically is. And he shows it off and he like fucking makes the. Uh, gauntlets around his arms and they're like wow and he's like yes this is a manipulation quirk that i inherited from my mother and i have some more but i will keep that a secret for now and they're like so it's all part of one quirk and he's like yes and he explains the black whip um basically goes through his entire body strengthens each muscle to a point where he can punch hard enough to change the fucking weather they're like i i interesting interesting and he just fucking explains that all of these are extensions of the black whip it's more it's a like he it's almost a like he has multiple quirks but it's actually one quirk. that's how it explains even though he does have multiple quirks and i know uh, y'all gonna be like why didn't if all might were to um unlock it he would have unlocked it a long time ago i don't fucking care i want to give all my this shit so fuck you oh, i love energy so, everyone's like, finally we know what All Might's quirk is. They're like, it's a power type manipulation quirk. That's how they, they classify it as a power type manipulation um, strength sla slash speed quirk. So it's basically an overall power manipulation quirk. That's what they call it. And they're like, and they did ask him how he this quirk is like, well, the quirk itself used to be weak. I couldn't really do anything with it. But after a time, it became more powerful as I learned to use it. And the more I trained my body to get accustomed to it, the stronger it got. They're like, so that's what you meant by stockpiling. And he's like, yeah, every time I get more experience and train, the quirk basically almost doubles in power. And they're like, interesting, interesting. You're basically fucking invincible. If you were a villain, we were all dead. Oh.
Wolf One is just like fucking. He's watching this and he's like, "What? He had a quirk? He doesn't remember the guy with black whip with Wolf One like, one for all? He like, oh my, had a black whip quirk? That just reminds me of that guy." And he's like, he's probably his son. And everyone's like, what? And he's like, yeah. And he and Shigaraki's with him and he hears this and he's like, what? All Might had a quirk? And he, and Shigaraki's like thinking about Deku and Raven and he's like, those two are trained by All Might. That's why they were so strong. And he's like, and, um, and all for one's just like, yeah, yeah. You'll get your revenge eventually. And I'm going to say they turn like do the thing to try and give Shigaraki multiple quirks early because Shigaraki's like fucking pressed to become like better than those two because those two could like fucking body him and he knows it because their quirks doesn't need them to touch him. So yeah. So he has the fucking meeting with overhaul and shit like that trying to get that alliance but that ain't gonna be important till later the league of villains already assembled and um i'm gonna say like most of them the only reason they joined the league of villains is so they could like fucking do what they want darby in this one is more of a vigilante type than a villain he won't do something unless it benefits and him toga most of them are like twice are there because of stain um stain the hero killer and because of his motives like a true hero is someone that saves people regardless of what happens but someone that's only there for the fame and the money is not a true hero and they don't deserve to be there that's like their mentality so Sorry, I had to take a sip of my drink there. Um, and they're like, have that mindset. So, if... They're like, if there was only true heroes, they would probably be heroes. Like, everyone's basically a fucking Stain fan in that world. Like, I don't know why. But still, Stain's fucking lit. I like him. And still, why do y'all say Deku couldn't become a hero just because he didn't have a quirk? Fucking Stain's quirk just let him fucking stop people if you drank their blood and it was a certain blood type like fuck it bruh did you see how that guy fucking moved he was like fucking strong like 15 percent or 20 percent uh, one for all fucking deku strong he was fucking lit dude like even night eye and eraser they're like fucking awesome heroes even if they don't use their quirks so fuck anyone that said you need a quirk to be a hero um <laughs> sorry uh, that just frustrates me about the series but yeah so <sighs> so they're like they're like on the fence of being a villain or a vigilante so um i'm gonna say time skip a few days after the sports festival um all might's meditating with deku and um raven They've been meditating more because they're trying to get a higher control over their de uh, their sin devil trigger form or their devil form or whatever you want to call it. So, and All Might's trying to get back into the fucking mindscape because he wants to learn more and unlock the rest of the quirks. And he gets in, but he can only talk to like three people. That's Nana, the guy with Black Whip, and All for One, One Fall's brother. Um, he can talk to that guy so and he would just like talk about them about their life they would tell him stories he'd be like interesting and they would like teach him to use their quirks and his in interesting ways so he does learn more and the black group guys like it's interesting how you use it to make clothes why don't you use it to make armor he's like yeah i made the gauntlet remember and he's like yeah but you can if you focus enough of all of, oh one for all strength into the black whip you can increase the mass size of the black whip he's like interesting interesting so then he tries it whilst meditating so he's just sitting dead still and then like fucking black whip like erupts like in mass and covers him and he's like that was like 95 percent 
and his bones are like aching because of it and he's like I need to get used to that they're like yeah and so fuck yeah um so and I'm gonna do something interesting when he unlocks all the quirks that's actually gonna be something fun I think y'all like so yeah just wait for that um but yeah, he's like meditating with them, getting them more control. He didn't, he can't make armor yet, but he can like cover his whole body in like black whip, except for like his mouth, nose, eyes, and stuff like that. So he can still breathe, and he's trying to get used to it. And I'm gonna have a time skip to I think it was the forest training arc, and everyone's allowed to go. So class one, I guess, there first. And Deku and Raven just see the Wawa Pussycats and they know about these people because they're rescue heroes. And they know their quirks and they're like, oh fuck. And they just fucking run and dive off the edge of the mountain when they got there. And then fucking Ida's like, get back on the bus! Because, and then fucking, it's too late, the fucking avalanche happens. And Deku and Raven's like, well, we can easily take this on ourselves so we're just gonna fly there, see y'all there um fuck it so they just leave like everyone else i'm gonna say they arrive a half an hour later than in canon so because they had to fucking work shit a little more because deku wasn't there so and bakugo wasn't there so there was no maneta pissing his pants i'm really sure he pissed his pants in that scene dude but they got there they saw the fucking kid what was his name koto izumi yeah, that was his name. Koto Izumi. They meet Koto. And because the Wawa Pussycats ain't there, like, they got there fast. Like, in a few. Don't even try it, kid. And he's fucking... Um, Aura just surrounds him. Because he doesn't want to get punched in the balls. And the kid, like, fucking... He runs off crying. And Raven's like, you didn't have to do that. He's like, sorry. And fucking Raven goes after him. And she's like... And he's just sitting there crying... And he and he and the kid's like, why do they have to try? They're just gonna die like mom and dad. And fucking Raven's like fucking bawling her eyes out because she heard this kid lost his parents at such a young age. And she fucking approaches him. She's like, hey kid. And he just like go away. And he turns around and he sees her crying. And he's like confused. Why the fuck are you crying? And she's like, I'm sorry. And he's like, about what? And she just goes sits next to him and brings him into a hug. And he's surprised. He's like. And kind of flustered at the same time. And he's like, what's, what was that for? She's like, no kid should lose their parents at such a young age. I lost my parents when I was, uh, I lost my mom when I was about your age. Never had a dad. My dad's kind of a dick. He's basically a villain. So I had to become a hero because I didn't want anyone else to go through that. But seeing someone else going through that kind of hurts. And he's like... Uh, he's just crying because he has someone to relate to so and he's like then why are you a hero if you just know that heroes die and she's like just think about it kid if there weren't any heroes and just villains this world would be worse off like there would be hundreds of thousands of kids without parents because villains kill whoever they want and the kids like starting to think about it and him and Raven are like cool now and he's like your friend's a jerk and she's like oh Deku he's not a jerk he's actually a nice guy he's just like how do I say this and Deku just walks out and he's like first of all I'm overprotective of my girlfriend second of all I don't want to get punched in the balls and he just goes sit and fucking um I forgot his name again <laughs> Um, what the fuck is a kid name now? Why do I keep forgetting the kid's name? Kato. Kato. His name is Kato. Um, he's like fucking. He's just like afraid now, and Deku's like, calm down, kid. I'm not gonna hurt you. That fucking aura outburst was just instinct. Sorry. And he's like, well, you're a jerk. And he's like, I said I'm sorry. It's like, fuck, I didn't mean it, bruh. It was like, I know how you feel. I never. My dad left me as a kid. And he's almost like, you heard all that? And he's like, yeah, I've been there the whole time. I heard everything. Um, and he's almost like, what do you mean you, your dad left you? And he's like, 
my dad thought I was quirkless because I didn't develop my quirk until like last year. Like two years ago and my dad didn't want a quirkless kid so he abandoned me and my mom. And fucking this kid's like, that's bad. And I I'm gonna save the rest for the next part because forest training art is gonna be interesting at the very least so um that is going to be all for this video us at mice to clan productions including six mice and his editors thank you for finishing the video now for official shout outs and patreon members at the end mice to clan productions <laughs> join my discord twitter instagram and tiktok also, thanks to the following people for becoming Patreons, Kahakashi Obachiha. And remember to check out the link in the description because the Dragon Lord created both our intro and outro. Now roll that outro piece. One, two, three, let's go! Subscribe for more. Yada yada does it.